In reading through the A Science Fiction Special series, Series 2, I've come up to an author, Marion Zimmer Bradley, that really is troublesome. I haven't read this yet, so these thoughts are before I read this book. My thoughts are about censorship and about evil. I think in its purest form, censorship tries to protect those we love from evil. In its most abhorrent form, censorship tries to suppress ideas. It wants to control its population. This becomes an interesting conversation in the arts. At what point does the context of a person overshadow their art? We may choose not to read something by a person who has done abhorrent things. We may choose to advise and guide others. And I think we have a responsibility to do that for those who are within our protection, especially children. So I say all that in a warning that we have an author here who is accused of doing abhorrent things. Once you know, you can never look at that author's work in the same way. But I think this is right to face an evil. I think science fiction abhors the closed mind. And I think that's a value that society should have too. So in the comments below, I ask that you have a respectful discourse. We are, after all, looking out for each other. And now to future Richard as he talks about the novel. Endless Voyage by Marion Zimmer Bradley, 1975. This fix-up novel was revised and expanded in the same year, 1975, with the new title, Endless Universe. There are three parts or three stories in here. Planets are for saying goodbye. And that's the first line of the story as well. We'll get back to that. Part two is entitled Hell World. And part three, a world with your name on it. Planets are for saying goodbye. This is the tale of the gypsy moth, its crew and their mission. They look for new worlds to install transmitters on. Transmitters are a means of teleportation from planet to planet. But you have to first get to a planet to install a transmitter. That's the mission of the explorers. Through time dilation, they live well past the lives of those on the planets. But as soon as they set up a transmitter, they get to update themselves on what's going on on those planets. Then they get back on their ship and they search for another world to install a transmitter on. This life has some drawbacks. The exposure to space radiation renders the crew sterile. They can't simply recruit people. They actually have to raise people from babies. They get an injection which helps them survive the space radiation, even though it makes them sterile. The radiation, that is. So each ship is a family of sorts. They need to rely on each other, and they need to have children. How do you get children? This is the terrible legacy of the explorers. Legend says that they steal children, or purchase them. And how do they raise these children? Not in the way you expect. There is an alien species they call Pooh Bearers that raise the children in the spaceships for them. They are like maternal Wookiees. So we have three stories here. The first story really sets up this universe. In the second story, we have some unfortunate events on a planet where this planet is dangerous to the crew and we lose some of the crew. Can they figure out what is happening and what they can do? And in the third story, we get a melancholic look at their life, how it spans so many years with time dilation. Is there a way to find a planet, a home to be on if you retire from the crew? This is a very competent story of exploration, teleportation, and time dilation. It's a haunting look at family and home. But a more disturbing theme is the treatment of children here. Or perhaps I should say the recruitment of children here. How do you decide which babies are sent off into space? Or is it a decision? It's certainly not their decision. The idea of agency in raising these children 
really hits close to that context I was talking about before for this author. Marion Zimmer Bradley's daughter, Moira Grayland, has written a book entitled The Last Closet, The Dark Side of Avalon. In it, she talks about the abuse that occurred within her family. This context made it unsettling for me to read about children being taken from parents and raised by aliens in a ship. Without that context, I think I would just take it at face value. But I do wonder about the genesis for some of the ideas in this book. Looking at the book itself, I would say this is a 7 out of 10 for me. It is an interesting take on exploration, time dilation, teleportation, and the raising of children for space travel. There's also an interesting, quite unexplored relationship with the aliens that take care of their children. So what do you do with a book like Endless Voyage? For myself, there is a degree that the art is separate from the artist. I think we can think of artists and politicians and people in all sorts of fields where we still consider what they say or write or paint or the music they create, regardless of who they are. I don't think we're here to be a judge and a jury on all aspects of a person's life for those who provide music, food, health care, etc. We have to reasonably accept art and service as it is. But I don't think we should completely disregard context. And I think context can guide us in making decisions whether we want to read more from this author or not. Now, I read this because it was an A Science Fiction special. I haven't read any other Marion Zimmer Bradley books, and at this point, I'm really not interested. But I could see there might be a time that I would read another one. So context still is important to me. Now we come up to the idea of censorship or guidance. I'm going to give you an example here. This novel, Growing Up in Tier 3000 by Felix C. Gottschalk, is the first novel in A Science Fiction Special Series 1 or Series 2 that I DNF'd, did not finish. This is copyright 1975. This is the only novel that Felix C. Gottschalk wrote. He was a psychologist, weightlifter, pianist, composer, poet, model builder, painter, and inventor. At the time of this writing, he was an author of 35 short stories, a novelette, and one novel. In the author bio, he says, As for writing itself, it's something that I do for me. If people like what I write, fine. If they don't, and he crassly says that he doesn't care. Well, when you get that kind of a warning going into the novel, there's reasons. I got 50 pages into a 150-page novel here. This is, I hesitate to call it, a utopia. Is a controlled environment with all the luxuries, amenities, and pastimes you could imagine. And life is accelerated. We're introduced to a five-year-old and a six-year-old who have the foibles of a teenager to young adult. They have the judgment of a five- or six-year-old, but the capability of doing things well beyond that age. We're talking extreme entitlement. And part of this society is keeping an equilibrium on the population. That means the children, when they are ready, get rid of their parents. This novel is a strange combination of future speak, but it's also rooted in events and people of the 60s and 70s. I'm not sure why years and years later they would refer to Lyndon Johnson. Children acting horrifically, parents trying to appease them to try to stay alive. I wasn't up for this. The author just seems to want to shock the reader, but it just wasn't for me. There was not one sympathetic character in the bunch. So I ended it at 50 pages. I felt like I had lots of great SF to read, and I didn't want to get stuck in this book. So I don't have a rating for it. Let's just call it a DNF. So in telling you this, I just want to let you know why I stopped reading it. You're welcome to read it for yourself, and feel free to comment if you have read it. So my values? I look at art and artists separately, but not completely. 
I understand there is context still, and I want to give guidance or receive guidance on what I read. I value guidance and discourse over censorship. How about you? What do you think about art and artists? Can you appreciate one without the other? We haven't talked about it, but perhaps there's some art that I just do not want to have anything to do with. Can I still appreciate the artist? Or perhaps other works of their art? I think there's a lot of shades of gray in here, and I'd love to hear your guidance in this issue. Until next time, keep reading.